You want to look at a woman like Deborah? She was willing to serve the Lord. She was obedient to the instructions of the Lord. And because she was, in a time and a season, when men of today, or people who lack understanding, would tell us that, oh, women were not to be seen or heard. Or women have limitations of what they can do. God has shown us examples across the length and breadth of the Bible to ensure that you, as the female, it's okay, don't worry, I'll go up and down, as the female hand of God, do not confuse the matters. That you have clarity in your heart that you have been called of God, that you're empowered by God, that the mandate on your life is not illegal. That there isn't a thing that is too big for you to do. That there is nothing that God isn't able to call you to. That there isn't a position, an office, an assignment that is too big for a woman. Deborah was the judge of God's people, Israel. She didn't just act as judge. She acted as counselor. She sat over them in matters of state. She acted as commander of the army. There was a military commander. But the one with the call and the anointing of God to command had to go for the military commander to function. Read it well. So, I'm starting at the top of the assignment. Because the first thing I want you to know is if your mind is limited by your own understanding of who God has called you to, then you haven't read your Bible well. It's true. Because if you have read your Bible well, then you know that when God had to plan how to save humanity, after the fall, the one he trusted the most to carry the promise To hold his own son and not foil God's plan. When in a business you develop your strategy, you're looking for trusted hands that you can share it with who can handle your corporate secret and not sell it to another for money and betray. You want the ones that will be responsible in managing that information and the process of execution. See, right now, if you've been following, Twitter wants to sue Facebook or whatever their new name is. Meta. Why? Because they say they have still copied them. That they have hired their staff who understood what. So there will be a war of the techs. Who cares? So, it's, a, it's the way of men and the way of life. But God had his biggest secret. And he needed two women. One to carry the forerunner, Elizabeth. And one to carry his son. His entire plan was based on their functioning properly being compliant to his will his word his instruction and being women that could be trusted and yet they did not fail God because the first thing I want you to understand is who you are as a woman in the hands of God as opposed to who the world has told you that you are and since you chose Deborah as your personality you made my life easy because she's the most perfect example of what God means. If you go home, read Numbers 27, verses 1 to 7. I want you to read about Zelophehad. Numbers 27, 1 to 7 presents you a scenario where women were not allowed to own land. 
In fact, in Israel, a woman was treated like the property of her father and was then transferred to her husband via a bridal payment. Do they not pay bridal price in Nigeria? Not much has changed. In their humility and wisdom, the five daughters of Zelophehad influenced the making of a new law by God to allow women to own land. It didn't exist before. But just to show how much God considered women and handled women, these daughters of Zelophehad, who lived at the end of Israelites' exodus from Egypt with their father. But as they traveled through the lands, you know, people died as they were wandering, getting lost in the promised land, trying to find their footing. If you read Numbers 26, 1 to 4, you find that there. I'm just laying foundation for you. Go home and do your own work. And their father died. It was one of those who died. And then it was decided that they would do a new census to count the children of Israel. But the households were, lit, were counted based on the male members of the household. Their father had five daughters. No son. So they realized that they would be counted out. That no land will be allocated to them in the promised land, even though there were five daughters of a man. Hmm. When his daughters realized that their father's name would be excluded when the land was given out because there was no male heir, they did an extraordinary thing that had not been heard of before. It's never been done. Who cares? Nobody has ever done this before. So what? My fathers didn't know. Mm -hmm. God's beginning is every day. Depending on his agenda. They that know they are God. I hope when I leave here, if you know nothing else, you know who your God is. And in knowing him, you will know you. Because when you know your source, you will understand yourself better. And once you do, bring it on. Becomes a challenge. Because you can take anything on. Because you know who you are and who you are. And you're not intimidated or afraid. They asked Moses... Eleazar the priest, the chiefs, and the whole assembly, even though it never happened before, they were not afraid. Courage belongs on the heart of women who know their God. Because if you lack courage, you can never take the land. Every place you would want to occupy has an occupant. But if the Lord has called it by your name, he will displace for you to occupy. But you must have the courage to step forward. Because until you step out, God can do nothing. Even though he wants to. But the Bible says, whatsoever you put your hands to do. That's what the Lord will perfect. So until you put your hands to do, God can't do nothing. If you put your hand to do nothing, God can only do nothing for you. Simple math. Zero times zero is what? End of story. Anyway, they went to Moses, went to Elazar the priest, went to the chiefs and the whole assembly for their right to inherit their father's property. In humility, I repeat, in humility, Moses brought the matter to God. How did Deborah know that they should go to war? It was in the place of the presence of God. She was instructed. So the woman that will be like Deborah will be what? A woman of the presence of God. A woman who understands that the, all the wisdom of the world that she has is nothing 
compared to 0. 0.00000 something percent of divine wisdom that she will receive or divine instruction that she will receive in any situation. And therefore, she would have humility like Moses and Deborah. And she would always, no matter what the matter is, big or small, it will become your way of life. You know, one of the tiniest things I've found how to apply God to is when I lose something. Even if I'm trying to put on my earring and a gold stud falls to the ground in the middle of a lot of stuff, and you know it's one of the most difficult things to find because once it hits the ground, you don't know where it bounced to. I have learned how to say, Lord, the hack's head floated. If the axe head floated, then whatever this thing is, it will float for me. So Father, take my eye to exactly where it is. I promise you, I have a 100% record of finding things that seem lost and missing. Always. So every time, you know, people are looking for something and I say, okay, pray the axe head prayer. Because it has worked for me. Always. Because once you find a rema in the Bible, you must run with it. Of what use is it if you find it and you don't use it? It's like being hungry, finding a bar of gold in your house and then putting it back on the shelf and sitting down crying that you're hungry. That's madness. It's really, what do you study the word of God for? It is to profit from its wisdom. It is for you to take on the wisdom of the word of God and war with it. You war, you run through the face of the earth with the secret weapon of the word that you have discovered. And I dare the enemy that will stand in your way. <laughs> so, in humility, the great and mighty Moses, even though these women were asking him for what had never happened before, didn't say to them, oh, you know, we don't do that. It never happened here. It cannot happen. That would be an arrogant position, speaking for God when God has not spoken. So all of us must be weary that we do not speak for God when God has not spoken. Because we can become arrogant in our knowledge as mothers, as wives, as bosses. We just say, no, 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 we don't do that here. Psh. Don't, haven't, is meaningless to God. There's always a first time. That's all I'm trying to show you. A moment where things didn't exist before. But even in a case that is so embedded in tradition, God showed up for the daughters of Zelophehad. In humility, Moses brought the matter to God. God responded that the plea of the daughters was just. So if you come from any of those Nigerian tribes where they dispossess the women when the husbands die, now you have a scripture to fight. Yes. If you come from any part of this country, where anybody says, because you're a daughter of the house, you have no inheritance. They don't know you. Because they don't know your God. By the time you're done, they will beg you with inheritance. But you must be able to take the word of God. You don't fight them in the physical. You go back to the place of your power. And you cause the God that rules in the affairs of men to come and set everybody straight. So that he can realign the situation for your good. The Bible tells us that God is just. And he said the pleas of the daughters of Zelophehad was just. And that they should be granted their father's inheritance. Because they had the courage to speak up. Because they had the courage to ask what had never been done before was done for them. A law that didn't exist in the ways and the living of the Israelites became established because these five daughters felt their father deserved his own portion. And even though they had no male heir, they believed that God is a just God and spoke up. And because they spoke, the Lord honored their word.